okay so let us begin so this is the seventh tutorial session this is the seventh tutorial session of the NPTEL course calculus of one real variable and in this tutorial session uh, we will look at the problems of week seven of from the previous run of this course so let us begin with the problems so this is the first problem of today which uh, asks to calculate the length of the curve which is given in a parametric form that is given like x equal to cos cube t and y equal to sin cube t and we have to find the length of the curve within the interval t 0 to pi so t is in the interval closed interval 0 to pi and we know the formula with which the length of the curve in parametric form is given so let me write the formula here so if the length is l then length is given by the integration a to b then x prime t square of that plus y prime t square of that whole root mod dt where it is needless to say that x prime t is dx dt and y prime t is dy dt okay so if the curve is given in a parametric form then we need to use this formula of length this formula of length and here a is the lower limit and b is the upper limit within these limits we are trying to find the length of the curve so in our problem we have a equal to 0 and b equal to pi and x and t are given here uh, sorry x and y are given here so let us calculate x prime t that is going to be ddt of cos cube t which is nothing but minus 3 cos square t sin t similarly y prime t will t will be ddt of sin cube t so this is going to be 3 sin square t cos t so now we need to evaluate this x prime square y prime square mod and both these are function of t like we have obtained here so we need to evaluate this and then do the integration so let us do it quickly so this will be mod then the first term will be 9 cos to the power 40 sin square t plus again 9 sin to the power 40 cos square t and then uh, root overall okay so those who have joined a bit late 
we are uh, solving the assignment seven of the previous run of this course and uh, so currently i'm in problem number one so please hang on uh, at the end i will discuss a little bit what you have you guys have missed okay so back to the problem here so we need to simplify this we can take 9 cos square t sin square t common so within root then this is going to be cos square t plus sin square t then we have a mod here so the term within the parenthesis which is cos square t plus sin square t we know this is equal to 1 so this is going to be 1 so this will be root of 9 cos t sin t mod and that will be mod of 3 sin t cos t or we can write it as 3 by 2 mod sin 2t and we can see that sin 2t is nothing but sin t plus t which becomes sin t cos t plus cos t sin t which is equal to 2 sin t cos t so i am using this formula here to convert 3 sin t cos t t cos t to 3 by 2 sin 2 t and I am keeping the mod sign here because sine a fun sine function can take both um, positive and negative values so I am keeping the mod sign here so now we need to do the integration which is defined here so let me do it so L is integration from 0 to pi 3 by 2 sin 2t dt so now if we plot the sin 2t function we'll see that this is like this so sin 0 will be 0 and when t is equal so this is t and this is sin 2t when t is equal to pi by 2 2t will be pi and sin 2t again, again be 0 so this point t equal to pi by 2 again sin 2t will be 0 and this is t equal to pi again we will have sin 2 pi equal to 0 and we can see that in the limit pi by 2 to pi this function is negative but we have to take into account that there was a mod modular sign here so due to that this negative function will be positive and we can write it like this so there is a mod sign so from 0 to pi by 2 we will have 3 by 2 sin 2t dt and then pi by 2 to pi we will have 3 by 2 times minus sin 2t dt this is because of the definition of how mod function is defined so this is equal to x if x is greater than 0 and minus x is if x is less than 0 so we are just using this definition here now uh, let me add a new page so we have l is 0 to pi by 2 3 by 2 sin 2 t dt minus 3 by 2 pi by 2 to pi sin 2t dt and integration of 
sin 2t dt is nothing but minus cos 2t by 2 you can take that common then another negative sign and this ne minus and this minus will be cancelled out so this will be plus cos 2t by 2 from pi by 2 to pi minus cos pi by 2 Now, if you put all the values here, so cos pi is minus 1, so this will be minus half, cos 0 is 1, so this will be minus half, plus cos 2 pi is, is cos 360, then it is 1, so this will be half, and again, this will be minus of minus half, so this will get simplified to 3 by 2 times half plus half plus half plus half so four halves will make two so this will be three over two times two so l is equal to three so l is equal to three now let me put a box around this answer so this will be the length of the curve which is given in the parametric form x equal to cos cube t, y equal to sin cube t and the length of the curve in the range 0 to t equal to 0 to pi is equal to 3 and if we check the option we will see that the second one is the correct option. Okay, so we are done with problem number 1. So please let me know if you guys have any doubt otherwise we will move to the second problem. Okay, I don't see any questions here, so I will move to the next problem. Okay, so again, in the second problem, we have to find the length of the curve, which is given in the form y equal to root over 1 minus x square, and x is in the range 0 to 1. Now, we saw one formula of how to find the length of a curve when the uh, equations are given in parametric form but when they are given in this kind of form which means y equal to fx kind of form then the length of the curve is given by so let me write out the formula again. So L will be integration A to B mod root over 1 plus dy dx whole square dx. Okay. So this is the derivative term here. And A and B are the lower and upper limit within which we are trying to find the length of the curve so this is the length of the curve okay so now in the question we are given this equation and we have to find which of this integral given in the option is correctly representing the formula for length of the curve in this range so for our case 
a is 0 and b is equal to 1. So then L will be integration 0 to 1 root of 1 plus dy dx whole square dx and y is root of 1 minus x square. So dy dx will be half times 1 over 1 minus x square times d dx of minus x square. So this will be half times minus 2x 1 minus divided by 1 minus x square. This 2 will get cancelled and dy dx will be minus x by root over 1 minus x square. Okay, so, so let us do this part also. Then what will be 1 plus dy dx square? That will be 1 plus minus x over root over 1 minus x square whole square. So that will be 1 plus x square by 1 minus x square or 1 minus x square plus x square divided by 1 minus x square. So here these x square terms will get cancelled out and we will have 1 over 1 minus x square. Now let us get back to here. So this is integration is from 0 to 1 mod root over and we have evaluated the term under the root. So this comes out to be sorry this was 1 over 1 minus x square dx and we can see that within this limit 0 to 1 x square is 1 minus x square is always positive. So we can get rid of the mod sign 0 to 1 root of 1 over 1 minus x square dx. So this is because x belonging to 0 to 1. is greater than 0. So we can get rid of the mod sign. So now we have the answer. L is equal to integration 0 to 1 root of 1 by 1 minus x square dx. So let me put a box around the answer. Okay. So, this is the correct form of the integration. Which will give us the length of the curve. So, if we check the option, we will see the last option is the correct one. As it is matching with the form that we have derived here. Okay. So, we are done with problem number two. So please let me know if you guys have any doubt. Okay, I don't see any questions, so let me go to the next problem, which is problem number three. So here, it is said that a solid object is made by rotating the area between y equal to 2x square and y equal to x plus 1. So let us 
plot them. So y equal to 2x square will look like this. Let us call it y1 and let us call this curve y2 which is x plus 1. So we are finding the area between y equal to 2x square and y equal to x plus 1 where x is greater than equal to 0. So x is greater than or equal to 0 means this region. So this is our x here. So the area we are interested in is this area. Okay. And this area here, we are then rotating it around the x-axis. So it is having this kind of rotation. So now we are trying to find what will be the volume of this uh, solid object which is obtained by rotating this area. So there is a formula to help how to calculate this volume. So let me write that formula. Volume of Okay, so the formula is given by v equal to pi integration from a to b y square dx. So here this is only when there is one curve given. So for example, you have this curve from a to b, then This will be the volume that we are rotating and the sorry this will be the area shaded region will be the area that we are rotating and this will be the volume that we get by rotating it now if there are two curves suppose another one here then the area that we will be rotating is given by this double shaded region And in order to obtain the volume for that case, let me redraw the second curve here. So this is like this from A to B. So, from this volume, suppose this is V1 and we are again rotating this curve. So, we will get another volume V2. So, when there are, we are, when we are targeting the area that is uh, made by these two curves and rotating that area to obtain a uh, solid object, then in order to get the volume of that solid object, we have to subtract one volume from other depending on which one is the greater. So in the integration range which one is the greater that will determine because volume cannot be negative. So in our case the formula will be modified like this from A to B y1 square minus y2 square dx okay and let us see the curve here so here 
let us first find out the point a and b so we know a is 0 because we are integrating from this point x is equal to 0 and we have to find this point so 2x square equal to x plus 1 we can write it like 2x square minus x plus 1 equal to 0 and that will give us two values x equal to minus half and 1 this one is not in the region of interest so this point here this is x equal to minus half and this is x equal to 1 so for our case b will be 1 and we can see that in this region in the region given here this curve which is denoted by y2 is greater than y1 which is this curve right so this is true for x in 0 to 1. So we have to modify our formula a bit. So this will not be y1 minus y2, this will be y2 minus y1 since y2 is greater. And now we are going to do the integration. So this will be 0 to 1. x plus 1 square minus 2x square whole square dx we can expand it a bit this will be x square plus 1 plus 2x minus 4x to the power 4 dx and this is just polynomial integration this is very simple to do this will be x cube by 3 plus x plus x square minus 4x to the power 5 by 5 and we can say this is evaluated in the interval 0 to 1 so this will be pi 1 by 3 plus 1 plus 1 minus 4 by 5 so this will be pi times 2 plus 1 by 3 minus 4 by 5 and we can simplify it a bit and we will obtain fifteen so this will be pi thirty five minus twelve by fifteen so twenty three pi by fifteen so this will be the volume so let us put a box around this and this is the answer okay so let us check the options and we will see that the third one is matching with the answer that we have derived so this is the correct option so any doubt for this problem uh, problem number three
okay i don't see any questions so let us move to the next problem which is problem number four so again we are given a region which is bounded by the two curves a parabola and a line y equal to 2x so let us draw them so this will be y1 equal to x square and this will be y2 equal to 2x so we are again looking at the area that is in the first quadrant and now we are rotating it along y axis so for that case the volume formula will be a bit modified so earlier since we are rotating along x axis we integrated along uh, dx right so now we are rotating along y axis so the integration will be over y so volume by rotating a sorry an area around y axis so this will be given by v again pi integration from a to b x1 square x2 square dy and again uh, x1 and x2 uh, the sign whether it will be x1 minus x2 square or x2 minus x2 square that will be calculated depending on which one is giving us a positive result because volume cannot be a negative cannot have a negative value so let us first again get the values of a and b so we have 2x equal to x square here that means x times x minus 2 is 0 so there are two roots x equal to 0 and 2 and this is the value of x equal to 0 and this is the value of x equal to 2 okay so now for our case we are doing the integration along y direction so our a and b will be written in terms of y so we can calculate the value of y or y1 so let us call this x1 and let us call this x2 and a will be y x1 y2 x1 0 and b will be equal to y1 x2 y2 x2 equal to 4 so our a is 0 and b is 4 so these are the limits of the integration and now we have to find x1 and x2 we have the curves y1 equal to 2x and y2 equal to x square so let me just check if i am no i am not consistent with the notation so y2 is 2x and y1 is x square so we can we have to write these functions in terms of y so x1 will be written in terms of y and x2 will be written in terms of y so we can see x1 will be root of y and x2 will be y y2 now when you are looking from the y axis you will see that the curve which is given by y1 that is greater so for y in the range 0 to 4 x1 is greater than x2 okay so which means 
the formula that we have written here will give us a positive value and then let us calculate this v is pi integration will be from 0 to 4 x1 square will be root y square then y over 2 square dy so this will be pi 0 to 4 y minus y square by 4 we can just carry out the integration y square by 2 minus y cube by 12 from 0 to 4 and this will be pi times 16 by 2 minus 64 by 12 so we can simplify it a bit it will be 16 by 3 so this will be pi times 16 by 6 or 8 pi by 3 so our volume is h by by 3 so this is the answer for problem number 4 and if we check the options we'll see that the fourth option is the correct option so please let me know if you have any doubt you can type in the chat box or you can also unmute yourself and ask. If there are no doubts, I will move to the next problem. Sir? Yeah. Um, why, why one is greater than y2? Here. Oh, here, y1 is... Uh, So you can see this plot, right? So when you are rotating along the y axis, so this axis, so this is one of the point and this is one of the point. And now when we look from this side, so which one is coming first? So this straight line will be first, right? Then this. So that's why x1 is greater than x2 since we are doing it in terms of uh, integration in terms of y so in the range zero to four you can just calculate the value suppose for y equal to one what will be the value of this point and this point? So you will see that this will be one and this will be half. So for the y2 curve, which is x2, so we have to, we are given this equation where y is written in terms of x and we have to convert it in an equation where x is given in terms of y. So y2 equal to 2x2 is written like x2 equal to y2 by 2. Okay. And now we are trying to find when y is same, which of the x value is lower. Okay. So suppose y is equal to 1, then what will be x2? x2 will be 1 by 2. Similarly, the other curve is y1 equal to x1 square. We can write it as a function of x, x as a function of y. So that will be x1 equal to root of y. So what will be the value of x1? x1 is root 1, that is 1. And you can see that x1 is greater than x2. So you can just put the values and see. And first, oh, Two things we have to notice here and 
from the previous problem one is that we are doing the integration along y axis we are rotating we are rotating this area along y axis so this is the direction of rotation not x axis so since we are rotating along y axis the integration will be in terms of dy so we have to convert the functions in the form of x and y will be our variable now we have to find from this side which one is lower and you can just take any point here in that within the range and you can just see which one is lower by just calculating the values and you will see that always x1 will be greater than x2 so is your doubt clear yes sir thank you okay okay then i will move to the next problem which is problem number five and we have to approximate the value of the integration which is given using trapezoidal rule for n equal to six so what is trapezoidal rule this is a estimation method for integration So when you are trying to find the values of our integration, so there are dx is missing. So when you are trying to find the value of our integration just numerically using a computer, you cannot tell the computer uh, that do this integration. We know how this works, the rules of integration, but the computer doesn't know. So there are different estimation method uh, which you can use to get the integration value as close as possible. So one is this trapezoidal rule. So what it does is, suppose you have this function and you are trying to integrate between this range A and B. So we divide this space here in N intervals. So that's where the N comes. So we'll tell that a will be x0, then we will have another point x1, x2, and b will be xn. And difference between any two consecutive points, so this one or these are defined as h, and h is given by b minus a by n so with that done we say integration a to b fx dx is approximately equal to h over 2 f x 0 plus 2 times f x1 plus 2 times f x2 plus 2 times f x n minus 1 plus f x n. So we are reducing the integration in a summation form so that it, it will be easier to do numerically. And you will see that the boundary points which is x0 and xn they have a coefficient of 1 which is this term and this term and the other terms have coefficient of 2 so now we are given that n is equal to 6 so that means our integration which is 0 to pi sin square x dx we'll have to divide the limit uh, the integration range a to b which is 0 to pi in 6 intervals and h will be in that case pi minus 0 by 6 or pi by 6 and what will be this point so we'll call it x0 x1 
x2, x3, x4, x5, x6 and x0 will be 0, x1 will be 5 by 6, x2 will be 5 by 3 or we can write it as 2 pi by 6, x3 will be 3 pi by 6 or pi by 2, x4 will be 4 pi by 6 or 2 pi by 3, x5 will be 5 pi by 6 and x6 will be 5 by 6. Now that we have all the x points, we can rewrite this integration as h over 2, we have h is 5 by 6, fx0, 2fx1, 2fx2, 2fx3, Five and then one coefficient for fx6. So this will be pi by 12 sine squared 0 that will be this term, this term will be sine square pi and other terms will have a coefficient of 2. sin square pi by 3, sin square pi by 2, sin square 2 pi by 3, sin square 5 pi by 6. And I missed one term sin square pi by 6. So these two times terms are here which are appearing with a coefficient of 2. Okay, so this will be pi by 12, 0 plus again 0 because sin pi is 0, 2 and it will be 1 by 4, 3 by 4, 1, 1 by 4, 3 by 4. You can just put these values and you will get this and it will be pi by 6, this 2 and 6 will get cancelled out times this 2 will be 1, 1 and this will again give 1, this will be 1 plus 1 plus 1, so pi by 6 times 3 is pi by 2. So the 0 to 1, sorry 0 to pi sine square x dx is approximately equal to pi by 2 for n equal to 6 using trapezoidal rule. So let me put a box around this whole thing. And this is our answer. So let us check the options here and you will see that the last option is the correct one. Okay, so please let me know if you guys have any doubt for this problem number five, then I will move to the next problem. Okay, I don't see any questions, so I'll move to the next problem, which is problem number six. And it says that, so it is a true false question, and it asks whether to estimate this integration, which is a to b fx dx 
using Simpson's rule. The function is, is approximated using trigonometric function. So I will tell that this is false and then I will explain. So suppose again we will have a function and we are trying to integrate it in this region. A to B. And what we will do is we will divide this region in different in n segments and for this n has to be even and then we are approximating between this region using quadratic functions. So this is uh, quadratically interpolated so Simpson's rule approximate functions using quadratic interpolations. So that is in the form of if is. approximated by ax square bx plus c. So this is really not trigonometric functions which are sine, cos, tan, etc. So that's why this is false. So any questions for this problem? If not, I will move to the seventh problem of today. Okay, I don't see any questions. So let us go to the next problem, which is problem number seven. And again, this is a similar true false question. So again, it is asking that with trapezoidal rule, the function f is approximated using a polynomial that has degree less than two. And like we saw in Simpson's rule, and we have already done a problem with trapezoidal rule, we divide the region of the function where we want to do the integration in segments and between these two segments in case of trapezoidal rule we approximate by a linear by a linear functions so for trapezoidal rule we with linear functions. So what are linear functions? They are in the form of ax plus b which is a polynomial of degree 1 and the statement says that we estimate with a polynomial which is less than you know, which has a degree less than 2 and since we interpolate with a polynomial of degree 1 this statement is actually true. Okay so we are done with this problem also. So please let me know if you guys have any doubt here. If not, then I will move to the next problem.
Okay, so I don't see any questions here. So let us move to the next problem, which is problem number eight. And this again is asking us to evaluate this integration approximately. using Simpson's rule for n equal to 4. So in the problem number 6 when we discussed whether uh, in the true false question when we discussed whether Simpson's rule is uh, um, approximating with a trigonometry function or not we draw this diagram and we can do a similar thing here. So when we are integrating this function fx from a to b we divide the intermediate regions in even number of segments and then the integration will be approximately given by this formula which is h over 3 f of x0 so this point will be x0 this will be x1 this will be x2 and similarly this will be xn and x1 minus x0 or better to say x i minus x i minus 1 will be b minus a over n. So this will be f of x 0 plus 4 times f of x 2 j minus 1 and this will be from j equal to 1 to n by 2. So every term, so 2j minus 1 here, this index is a odd index. So every odd term that is x2, x3, these will have a coefficient 4 and the even terms will have a coefficient of 2. Okay, so here it is, uh, the formula is little more complicated than trapezoidal rule. You have to just uh, make sure that you are using the correct coefficients. So boundary terms will have coefficient 1, the even terms will have coefficient 2 and the odd ones will have coefficient 4. Okay, so with this formula given, let us evaluate the problem It is given here. So here A is 0 and b is 2 so x0 will be so h will be 2 by 4 or half x0 will be 0 x1 half x2 1 x3 3 by 2 and x4 2 and let us call this i this integration and i will be equal to 1 by 3 times half f of 0 plus this is our term 4 times fx1 plus 2 times fx2 since this is an even index then 4 times fx3 and then for the boundary term just fx4 so now we just need to evaluate this so this will be 1 over 6 0 plus 20 in 1 over 16 plus 10 times 
on this again 20 times 81 by 16 plus 5 times 2 to the power 4 so this will be 1 over 6 20 81 so we are taking this term and this term here and this is written here then 10 and this one will be 5 times 16 which is 80 so 10 plus 80 so now you can simplify this and i'm just going to write out the answer here so this is coming out to be 192.5 by 6 which if we approximate will get 32.08 so in the questions uh, it is asked to approximate up to two decimal digits and after doing this approximation we will have that this integration 0 to 2 5 x to the power 4 dx is approximately equal to 32.08 using Simpson's rule for n equal to 4. So this is the answer of problem number 8 and the third option will be the correct option. So please let me know if you guys have any doubt for this problem. If not, then I will move to the last few two problems. We are already past the stipulated time, so I will move a bit quickly. But if you guys have questions, I will uh, surely pause and answer your doubts. So please let me know if you have any doubts so far. Okay, I don't see any questions. So let us move to the next problem, which is problem number nine, which is a penalty mode problem. And it asks to check whether the sequence given as xn equal to 1 plus 1 over n to the power n is converging or not. So if it is converging, uh, what is the value uh, in which the sequence is converging to? So basically, we have to find what will be the value of xn that is uh, nth term of this sequence as n tends to infinity. So this can be written as limit n tends to infinity 1 plus 1 over n to the power n. And we can do this systematically. So let us proceed 1 plus 1 over n to the power n. This term here can be expanded with binomial expansion. So this will be 1 plus nc1 1, 1 over n plus nc2 plus sorry this will be nc2 times 1 over n square similarly nc3 times 1 over n cube and so on the final time ter term will be ncn times 1 over n to the power n. So this is using binomial expansion. So which tells 1 plus x to the power n is 1 plus nc1x plus nc2x square 
plus n c3 x cube n c n x to the power n. So here we have just used x equal to 1 by n and with that you will get this formula. So now we know that n c or let us do it for a general case n c r is n factorial n minus r factorial by r factorial. So if we simplify this we will have n c 1 equal to n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial sorry I made a mistake this will be actually n c yes sir n 2 it will be n uh, n c 2 will be this and n c 1 will be n similarly n c 3 will be n into n minus 1 n minus 2 by 3 factorial okay so we can proceed with this and we can replace the values here so limit n tends to infinity this is going to be 1 plus n times 1 over n plus n times n minus 1 by 2 factorial times 1 by n square right and there will be other terms so we can check here one of the terms so you can we can check so for example this term times n cube and you will see that 1 in is going to be cancelled out and we can write it as 1 over 3 factorial n minus 1 by n n minus 2 by n so this will be 1 over 3 factorial 1 minus 1 by n 1 minus 2 by n okay similarly others like n into n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3 by 4 factorial that will be 1 by 4 factorial 1 over 1 minus n, 1 over 2 minus n times 1 over 3 minus n. So the terms here they can be simplified like this and if you do that you will have limit n tends to infinity the first term will be 1, the second term will also be 1, the third term will be 1 over 2 factorial, and the third, fourth term will be There'll be other terms. Now you, you see that everywhere we get 1 over n in the limit n tends to infinity, this, this is going to be 0. And so 1 over n to 2 over n, all these are going to be 0. Right, in the limit of n tends to infinity. So what will if we apply this limit, what will this sequence be like? This will be 1 plus 1 for these two terms. Then it will be 1 over 2 factorial, 1 over 3 factorial, 1 over 4 factorial, and so on. So we can rewrite it like 1 over 0 factorial, the first one here, the second one is 1 over 1 factorial, and like this, and we can write it as i equal to 0 to infinity 1 over i factorial. We know that this sequence is actually equal to e. So this is a known result that e is equal to 
summation over k starting from 0 to infinity 1 over k factorial and we see that the last term here is equal to this sequence so that means the master sequence here given sorry like this that will converge to e so this sequence is convergent and it is converging to e so the third option is the correct option okay so limit n tends to infinity xn is equal to e this is the answer so any doubt here if not we can then move to the last problem of today okay i will yes sir uh, yeah. proceed sir okay thank you okay i'll go to the last problem if you guys have any doubt you can also ask me at the very end okay so again this is a problem with a sequence and the sequence here is given as xn which is a to the power n plus 1 and it is being asked for what values of a this is converging okay so we can check these um, one by one so what will happen if a is equal to one so let me write this sequence clearly so this will be like a a square a cube and so on right so what will happen if this is uh, a is equal to one we'll have a constant sequence right so this is converging So, like the previous problem also, here we are basically asking the same question, limit n tends to infinity a n plus 1, whether this is converging that is uh, not equal to infinity or diverging. Okay. So, when a equal to 1, then limit n tends to infinity 1 to the power n plus 1 will be actually 1 and this will be a converging sequence. Now, what will happen if a is equal to 2 or in general a is greater than 1? Again, we write limit n tends to infinity a to the power n plus 1 and you will see that this goes to infinity right because for a equal to 2 this will be 2 4 8 16 32 and it will go on so you can do this uh, you can prove this by a very simple proof so you can do it like this for example if a is greater than 1 you can write a as 1 plus delta where delta is greater than 0 and then a to the power n plus 1 we can write it as 1 plus delta to the power n plus 1 and again we can do binomial expansion so this will be n plus 1 to the power uh, times delta plus n plus 1 c2 times delta square and so on and the last term will be delta to the power n plus 1 now you can see that n plus 1 uh, n plus 1 c2 these terms are positive and delta is greater than 0 so delta to the power n will always be positive so we can conclude here that a to the power n plus 1 
which is equal to 1 plus delta to the power n plus 1 is greater than this right now we consider a sequence which is given by this suppose this is yn so now check whether this sequence is converging or not so limit n tends to infinity yn will be 1 plus delta plus n delta and that will go to infinity right so if a sequence which is always smaller than the this one is diverging then it is by comparison we can say that this sequence is also diverging or not converging sir uh, n plus 1 uh, power delta or into delta uh, here this is into delta so i am doing the binomial expansion again okay sir Sir, the, this limiting can you explain, sir? Limit uh, n approaches infinity y of n. Yeah, so, yeah, sure, I will explain again. So, here you have, uh, you can write a to the power n plus 1 as this, right? And again, use this formula nc1x, nc2x square, x to the power n. Right, this is the formula of binomial, yes, expansion. binomial expansion. Correct. You put that here and you will have this one. And now you see that this term is positive, this term will always be positive, and all the other terms are positive. So we can write that 1 plus delta whole to the power n plus 1 will be always greater than the first two terms, which is 1 plus n plus 1 times delta. Now I am saying that if the first term we consider a new sequence yn where the nth term is given as 1 plus n plus 1 times delta and delta is greater than 0 then whether this sequence is convergent or not. So we can how we can see that we check limit n tends to infinity y n and you will see that this is 1 plus n delta you just expand this plus delta so n tends to infinity and delta is positive that means this will be infinity so this sequence is not convergent right so if a sequence which is diverging then every element of another sequence which is xn we have always that xn is greater than yn xn is the original sequence here and yn is this one so we have always xn is greater than yn so if yn is diverging by comparison we can say that xn will always be diverging so is it clear uh, yes sir uh, delta is however small no 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 delta not not delta is you do not have any restriction that delta is very small so usually we write delta to be very small we can write it also like this so we are probing the limit correct sir i go i got yeah. sir over yeah one a a is greater than one so we can write it as a equal to one plus k where k is greater than zero so that is the only criteria and this binomial expansion that is uh, valid for everything we are not doing any approximation this is a exact formula this is exact
So for any value of k, which is greater than zero, we will see that the new sequence that we are making uh, using yn that is diverging. So by comparison, we are telling that xn is always di diverging. So for this case, a is greater than one. So is it uh, clear? Hello. So this comparison we did now here. Comparison. Uh, sir, uh, y n we got divergent, and we by by comparison we did that x n yeah. is also divergent. Yeah. Sir, uh, throw some more light on this. Yeah, sure, sure. So suppose you have a sequence n. Okay. So what it will be? It will be one, two, three. Four like this, and you have another one in square. So this will be one, four, nine, sixteen, like this, right? So here in square is always greater than or equal to n, right? So if this one is uh, going to infinity, then something. I'm sorry. So if this one, the first one, is going to infinity, yes, sir. Then infinity, n square will also goes to yeah. The n square infinity. will also go to infinity. So that is uh -huh. the comparison here. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. Then I will proceed. Then, so we got that for a equal to one, this is converging. So this is case one. Say, we have it. Converging for case two, which is uh, a greater than one, we have x n diverging. So let me add a new page and then we can probe the limit uh, the case where a equal to minus one and you will see that the sequence will be one minus one one minus one like this so this is the alternating sequence so as you have probably done in the class that uh, alternating sequence is Sir, neither convergent neither yeah. divergent neither convergent they oscillate like or not yeah not divergence this is actually oscillatory so this is neither convergent nor divergent and another limit we can check is a less than minus 1 so that will also give you oscillatory positive and negative terms. So for example, a minus two will give you two then sorry minus two. This will be minus two to the power two minus two to the power three and like this so this term will be positive this term will be negative so this will again be oscillatory and this will be neither convergent nor divergent so now we are only in this region where a is within minus 1 to plus 1 in this open interval and here we have that mod a is less than 1 so we can again rewrite it like this a as 1 over k so less than 1 and then we will have sorry this is less than 1 then we will have mod k greater than 1 then 
we can again create a new sequence of this k to the power n where k is greater than 1 and we have already shown that limit n tends to infinity k to the power n is diverging so this is this case this case number 2 so this is diverging if this is diverging then we can say that 1 over k n will go to 0 and so we can also use the mod here so that will go to 0 and we have 1 over k is equal to mod a so that is going to 0 so so that means this is converging right so we have two cases one is a equal to 1 where the this is converging and we have a um, or you can write it as mod a less than 1 where this is converging and we can club these two cases like this so for these values of a the sequence xn which is equivalent to a to the power n plus 1 will be converging. So, this is the answer. Okay, and now let us see the options here. We will see that the first option resembles what we have obtained. So, this is the correct option. Okay, any doubts? Uh, in any of the questions correct sir <coughs> yeah any doubts okay so i don't see any questions here so uh, we are then done with this problem solving session so this was the seventh uh, class so in this session we did the problems of uh, assignment 7 from the previous run of this course and we will meet again in the next week uh, Tuesday from 7 to 8 and we will discuss the assignment of 8th week of the previous run of this course so bye for today we'll meet again in the next week okay thank you sir yeah thank you bye thanks for joining